Welcome back, folks, for uh, segment two of the Glazoff Gang. This is Michael Finch sitting in for uh, Jamie Glazoff, who's away. Uh, we, we're talking about the media. We're talking about uh, will they stay on the IRS story? Will they, will they continue to pursue Obama, Eric Holder, and the mess that this uh, administration has made? They've lost a lot of respect, I think, with the American public. Uh, that doesn't mean they've lost respect with the media, but I'm hearing that that's a possibility. I want to go a little bit deeper. Okay, the, the look. I, I'll be honest. I'm loving the the scandals. I, I can't help it. I mean, it's, it's, it is. It's it's the the, the arrogant pride and hubris, um, and and he's fallen. I mean, he deserves uh, Barack Obama deserves all of this. He deserves all the scorn. He brought it upon himself, and he's responsible. Um, Do you want our president to fail? Well, here's. I, I, you know, I do want him to fail he before failed. he destroys this country. I'd Rush rather Limbaugh country. was way ahead <laughs> of yeah. the curve, yeah. wasn't he? But yeah. there is a downside to this, and, and, and I want to get into some of the implications. Anytime an administration is caught in some kind of scandal, um, it, freezes, uh, it freezes power in Washington. It, it really be, I mean, this is an inept, fickless, feckless administration anyway. Um, but now, I mean, you're frozen. So the, uh, the administration, I think, is... Um, in, in a very dangerous position, given the fact that uh, North Korea is uh, testing uh, nuclear weapons, Iran is running uh, full speed towards, uh, we have possible weapons. Syria, mm -hmm. we have possible chemical weapons, uh, civil war in Syria. The world um, notices this, and not everyone in the world has the United States' best interest in their hearts. Um, so I'll start with you, Michael. Uh, there's some bad actors in the world. What is their impression right now when they look at a wounded mm -hmm. Um, I mean, they were kind of laughing at us for the first four years, but now you have scandals which are really hamstringing uh, this administration. What's the world implications? I think that uh, those who are, our, who are our allies are alarmed. Mm -hmm. I think of Israel, mm -hmm. I think of Japan, I think of mm -hmm. South Korea, I think of Australia. And these entities look at us and say, if America is not there to, to pick up the slack or to, or to back us, if I can use a different word, who then can? And when you start to think then of, of nuclear weapons being developed by North Korea or by Iran and maybe being dispersed to other nations. Think Hamas, that's not a nation of course, mm -hmm. or Hezbollah or the worldwide jihadist effort. What's to prevent nuclear weapons from either of those two entities being transported any place else, including here, and starting a whole new uh, arms escalation? America hasn't got the cojones. To, to face this kind of problem because we are inwardly focused now yeah. looking at scandals like Fast right. and the Furious, right. Benghazi, IRS, AP. Right. We're looking inward instead right. of outward at the problems that really are out there. Well, the, yeah. the, it, the one thing Putin doesn't lack is you know, he thinks about Russia's self-interest 24 hours a day. You know, we wish we had a leader that would do that for the United <laughs> States. Um, so, Anne Marie, what yeah. uh, Russia and China? I mean, you got all the bad actors. You know, Iran, Venezuela, and, and North Korea, China and Russia. Could I mean, you know, China's been having the border disputes with uh, on the islands with uh, Japan. They, they're, you know, they want Taiwan. Mm -hmm. What I worry about is Obama's got to get the the news away from all the scandals. And what better than a foreign crisis? Uh, doesn't mean <laughs> yeah. he, he doesn't even have to manufacture mm -hmm. it because all you have all these tripwires. Um, do you worry at all that we could end up falling into a Syrian conflict or some kind of greater conflict again just by? The, the, the weakness of this administration. Oh, absolutely. I think this is exactly the, I, I personally believe this is the reason 9-11 happened in 2001. After the, the idiotic years of Clinton and the mm -hmm. impeachment and the stupid blue dress mm -hmm. and the, the talking about semen on television and, and lies, I think we were seen as just such a weak, idiotic, imbecilic country. And we were, and so when President Bush stepped in, we were immediately ta attacked, and then, but then after the next eight years, we weren't. Yeah. I feel like this is exactly the same scenario that we had at the end of of, of Clinton's years. That we are, we, we just look so weak and it's, so stupid. I right would now. add to that that we were, I pr I propose that we were attacked because we appeared to be weak. Yeah, of course. And these opponents underestimated right. Bush, thinking oh, yeah. Bush oh, yeah. was probably like Clinton. But Bush was not like no, Clinton, he wasn't. and they really he was didn't a expect cowboy. a response either in <laughs> yeah. Iraq well, they, or in Afghanistan. And they were truly surprised when we sent Rangers and mm -hmm. B1s right. and all the rest. Yeah. 
So they attacked us when we were led by a, you know, a, a cowboy, a reckless cowboy. <laughs> Supposedly that's what the world. Now we, we don't even have the, uh, you know, we don't have a, a that we have yeah. such a weak person in the White House. But Morgan, so these scandals, we need these scandals to go away so America can be strong. Well, here's here's the thing. Perception is reality. These people are looking at this country and they're looking at the chaos over here and what's going on. And they're looking at the leadership at the top or non-leadership at the top as weakness. We are weak. We are vulnerable. They see it. They know it. They're going to take advantage of it. If, if the White House doesn't see this, there's no strength there. There's no strength anywhere. We look like helpless babies to the world. I'm sorry to say it, but we do. Because when Barack Obama goes on an apology tour in the first four years of his administration and bows to other leaders in other countries, what does that tell you? And then he wants to bring everything back down. He wants to lower our military and lower everything and, and you know, make sure that we're, we are weak. That's what he wants to do. But that's the perception around the world. And believe me, they will take advantage of it, whether it's the Islamic terrorists, whether it's Putin, whoever it may be, whether it's China, Iran. Think of all the people that are out there just waiting. Well, let, let me ask them, because look, the three of you, I mean, I think you've analyzed this brilliantly. I really do. Um, and this is the three of you. Not every Democrat has got you know, mush for brains. There are some really mm -hmm. smart Democrats. Oh, sure. There's no question. Michael, they must see, they, at some point they're going to say, Barack Obama's going to drag this party down, we're going to lose the Senate, yeah. and we're not going to get the White House. This guy, who would seem like the savior of the uh, Democratic Party, could end up destroying the Democratic Party. How, how long do you stick with the sinking ship? Or at what point, or will the Democrats just, out of blind loyalty, go all the way down with them? Or will there be a point where they have that Watergate moment where the Republicans went fr from, the, uh, mm. from the Congress over to the White House and said, We've got a real problem. You've got to resign. Not saying that we're at that point, but wow. I think many Democrats will stay with him no matter what. Okay, some will will abandon him, and you're seeing that now. However, I think that the, if anything, the Democrat Party is going to stay largely loyal to Democrat philosophy, and that by that I mean they're more in, concerned with the welfare of the Democrat Party than mm -hmm. with the welfare of the United States. Yeah. You look at economy. You look at the military, like you say. Mm -hmm. You look mm -hmm. at the integrity of the schools you look at law enforcement, you look at borders, they're not concerned really with those kinds of things. Yeah. They see them in terms of voting blocks or, or, or donations and that sort of thing, but they don't think in terms of American strength or prestige or responsibility or reliability. And if those things are not the hallmarks of American strength and resilience, then we are, as, as you say, Morgan, weak, perceived as weak, mm -hmm. and not just at the top with the presidency, yeah. but the people mm -hmm. are weak. And that's a recipe for trouble. It's just, it's very unfortunate that this administration, or even a lot of the Democrats that are in power, they're not so much thinking of the good of this country and leading this country and showing strength and unity as a country. They're more concerned about pushing their agendas exactly. and winning elections. That's what it's become. It hasn't become Look, we have, we have to have a strong country and a strong people and a strong image in the world. That doesn't mean anything to them anymore. Exactly. It doesn't. And I'm afraid there's a lot of Democrats that follow that same thing because they're, they are absolutely, a lot of them are saying, well, this doesn't matter. Look at Howard Dean. Oh, this is a joke. Benghazi's a joke. It doesn't really well, matter. Well, I think what... I, I agree with that, Anne Marie. And what, so what that means is forget you know that this could destroy the country. Uh, at some point, they may say, "Oh my God, this guy's going to destroy the Democratic Party." And yeah, at that point, yeah. if you're just thinking about party and building coalitions, right, right. maybe that's the point they bail. Um, but what I mean is, there anything else that worries you? Um, I mean, we can look at say, the guy the scandal. The economy worries me. Well, okay. I, our, our, I financial, yeah. our financial underpinning, money is said to be the root of all evil, but the lack of money really mm -hmm. is the root of all evil because those who do not have money cannot be placated. Well, America is destroying itself on finances. You look at cities, counties, mm -hmm. states, mm -hmm. or, na or the nation, and that's in a, in a governmental sense. Look at, this, look at the resilience of companies. Now companies are trying to make do with less. All these things show financial weakness. 
Well, if financial weakness is the norm, then the society is weak. And our opponents everywhere, in every form, will see that weakness and think that we can be replaced, taken, mm -hmm. usurped, mm -hmm. abused. I do want to say that I'm really proud of Eric Holder <laughs> for, for coming out today on Wednesday and, 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 <laughs> announcing, I didn't expect that. and announcing that four Americans were killed by drones out of nowhere, all of a sudden, saying that Obama wants to be honest about things from now on, like he's always claimed to be. It's the, it's the transparency. Yeah. Why on May 22nd? It's a red no, it's like a red Those Americans Paris. were killed how long ago? Yes, exactly. Ago? Between 2009, it was so long ago, and they were killed in the Middle East. Wow. It was, a, you know, they yeah, were so what, potential terrorists. Why did that? I mean, they said now it's, de pop they said it's declassified. Yeah. Hey. Although I think we knew that. Out of I mean, they were, they were, we knew they were killed by, by drones. So yeah. why'd that come out? Yeah, is that why did that come out? Distract. It's a sparkly thing over here. Because I think they got together I, ha I think they had a little meeting with Harry Reid and, and Debbie Wasserman Schultz and all and they oh. said what a, what a, what a conservatives <laughs> oh. really get upset She's about what do they get worked, we're worked not up, gonna get about? upset about they get worked up about drones remember how upset they got about Rand, Rand Paul let's let's throw that but they, out they there won't. I mean Morgan are you upset if, if, an Amer <laughs> if okay given that someone's an American citizen they're over in Pakistan or Afghanistan working with al-Qaeda killing Americans are you upset that we sent in a drone attack to kill that American citizen it's war it's that's what it is right. it's so, war so they know I it's know. not gonna upset I mean, who, so they made it sound like it was a little guy, an Iowa corn oh, farmer. They got struck by a drone. They they just want to stir up a hornet's nest no, and they get us to the, They wanted to distract, the words, just yeah. like you said. One of the words Absolutely. that applies here that is not said is the word treason. This yeah. guy, Alaki, was a treasonous That's actor right. against right. America. Right. Yep. Okay. Either, what did Bush say? Either you are with was, us yeah. or you are or against, against us. us. Well, he mm -hmm. may have been born in the United States. He could speak English perfectly, but his allegiance was not to us, but it was with our opponents. And he took delight in mobilizing our opponents against us with his American skills. He deserves uh, a drone strike. Wow. I have no problem yeah. with is that. It, isn't that a scary thought when Bush said, you're either with us or against us? Think of what that means now when Barack Obama says it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It means, it means tea party. conservatives, <laughs> Tea Party, religious people, you're either with us or against us. And if you're against us, we're, well, com he's, we're he's coming made to that get clear you. For the last he's years. made it so clear. He's Look at the him. difference between yeah. and, the and, two. And add to that equation the concept of miniaturized drones. It's mm -hmm. not some big, you know, forty-foot drone flying forty thousand feet up. Now it's a little drone about the size of my glasses. That's right. Flying four hundred feet up. Yeah. I can't see it or hear it, but it's there looking down into my backyard. Yeah. Right. Oh. Right. Or right exactly. now over us. I want to. I want to. <laughs> we've got only a few minutes left, so I want to. <laughs> Pivot to, I saw this video today, I don't know if the three of you did, where Ted Cruz and John McCain were debating each other on the Senate floor. <laughs> and John McCain, I, I think he thought he had Ted Cruz cornered. He says, what you're saying, uh, Senator Cruz, is that you're, uh, you don't trust Republicans. That's what you're saying. And Ted Cruz says, you're right, Senator McCain. I don't, you, the esteemed senior citizen from Arizona is what he said. I don't, this is dealing with budget negotiations. I don't trust Republicans. I think Ted Cruz, that's a strategic move mm -hmm. because the American mm -hmm. public, just like we don't like the IRS, we're tired of politics, tired of Republicans and Democrats. Um, what did, did any of you see that? Do you have any thoughts about Ted I, Cruz in general? I he's think definitely staking he's a position. I think he's I like him great. Too. Texas. He is not afraid to say what he feels. The American people like that. Mm -hmm. The American people are behind that. Anytime somebody stands up, like when Rand Paul did, and he stood up, oh. that, to me, it shows, and the American people back it. And they go, you know what? We need more people like that. That makes me think of when he stood up for, for Apple. That's mm -hmm. the, yes. I think that was exactly. a, a, a critically, brilliant. critically enlightening uh, uh, ob object lesson for America. Absolutely. Because don't we want our companies to succeed? Mm -hmm. Why does Apple yeah. or companies like them shield their money offshore? They do this because our corporate tax rate is so high that we are discouraging American companies from harnessing their wealth here. They mm -hmm. have to shield it abroad. Is there no lesson that government can take from that? Well, yeah. that was a wonderful lesson it that was. Rand Paul applied yeah, for was. us all. Well, think of like Rand, Rand Paul and Marie. Mm. Um, I think he's well positioned with this IRS scandal because Rand Paul, I mean, he's a libertarian. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, I, he, he softens that a little bit. He thinks all taxation is theft. Mm -hmm. um, he would like to eliminate the IRS, not, you know, he would start with a flat tax, I'm sure, but I think he has a very uh, a different view of the IRS than your mainstream Republican. Yeah. Um, 
and he's in New Hampshire, he's in Iowa, he's going to South Carolina. Um, I think the IRS scandal plays into Rand Paul more than any other Republican. Oh, yeah. um, does Rand Paul kind of have the, have the head start right now for 2016, or is it still way too early? For president? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not, not for me in particular, but as heading any kind of financial institution or any kind of government that anything, just like his father, I think he's brilliant at keeping control of constitutionality and things like the IRS and getting that under control. For president, he's not my choice. I love Ted Cruz. I nope. don't want any establishment Republican ever. And John McCain, I don't consider him any kind of Republican. No, but we anymore. need their voices. We mm -hmm. do. Yeah. Even if they're not oh, yeah. even if ultimately they're not the candidate, we need their yeah. voices. We do. And we need the strength. We've got to show strength somewhere. Yeah. We do. And the Republican Party has really got to get galvanized. I think a lot of people, my biggest fear is that with this targeting of the, you know, the, uh, the IRS targeting all of these groups, that people are going to start pulling back their money and not yeah. donating to candidates because they're afraid they're going to be targeted for a pro-life group mm -hmm. for something and they're going to go, wow, I don't want to give money. And you know what that does? Money is the mother's, is, is yeah. the mother's milk of elections. And don't, don't ever think that that's not. Yeah. The, that one of the goals to shut down the money supply. Yeah. And the IRS is going to control 20% of Obamacare. Of Obamacare. I know. Well, we've, I got, know. We've, we've got only a minute left. I want to have <laughs> our book recommendations. Although the one thing came out, National Review um, had the story today, was, it was around is the IRS uh, uh, targeting the conservative groups is going on today. J another lie by Jake. Mm -hmm. It didn't end last year. So mm -hmm. let's keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. Jamie Glazoff told me that if I don't, hold up his book or mention one of his <laughs> books that I would never get to host again. Uh -oh. uh, so saying that, I'm going to hold up uh, Victor Davis Hansen's book, The Savior <laughs> Generals, as my recommendation. It's his brand new book. Um, I don't know if any of you are military historians. Matthew Ridgway, the general oh, during yeah. Korea, who is not taught in American schools at all. Brilliant uh, book by Victor Davis Hansen. But I want to move on. Uh, Anne-Marie, you're next. Well, because I'm going to host the show next week, I'm going to say that my favorite book of all time is United in Hate by Dr. <laughs> yes, Jamie Glazoff. all right. You'll be hosting forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The book That's I would recommend good. is The Manchurian President. It shows the background, Excellent. the background uh -huh. uh, and formative foundation of our esteemed president. And that's uh, nonfiction. My fiction book is The War in 2020 by Colonel Ralph Peters, U.S. Army. Oh, oh okay. very terrific. good. And Morgan. as for me, I'm reading Glenn Beck's book, new book called Control. It's about uh, the truth about guns. Very, very interesting, easy read if you want to, you know, get your head start on summer reading. And I should say this in a southern accent because Jamie is definitely going to ask me about it. So go out and get your copy of Control. Okay, so Anne-Marie, is that about all? It's about all. <laughs> Morgan messed that one up, but that's her accent. It's, it's, it's just about, it's, it's about it's all. <laughs> but also, i got to say, Atlas Shrugged. Oh, yes. Excellent. Ayn Rand, yes. everyone has to read that. Wow. I've read it four times and written on almost every single page. Okay. Brilliant. It's what's happening now. Thank you all, to all of you. What a fantastic thank show. Thank you. You did a great yes. job. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. If Jamie has me back. And thank you, folks, for this uh, edition of the Glass Off Gang. We'll see you next week. Good night.